good afternoon, everybody. And now is the time that you've been waiting the entire con for, the Midwest YouTube Gamers Panel 2019. I'm Jason of Corpse Club Gaming, and this is... I'm Tim from uh, Captain Algebra. I am Musty Hobbit from the channel Second Breakfast. I am Chris Pico. I'm the old-ass retro gamer. My name's Taylor. I'm from the Rise of Blue Phoenix YouTube channel. And I am Church from the Game Grinder. Yeah! <laughs> well, guys, why does our opinion hey, matter? Tony. Do we yeah. really know what we're talking about? And yeah. who the hell are we? Yeah, so you might be wondering, who are these guys? We're not like angry video game nerds, so, uh, <laughs> you know, to our credibility, you know, it doesn't take a huge YouTube channel to know a little bit about YouTube. So combined, all of us together, we have 22 years of experience doing YouTube. None of us have been doing this less than three years. Uh, combined views, we have 400,000 views, uh, uh, 1,600 videos, and total combined subscribers, 5,000. So, so we know a little bit. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you're a little about us. Uh, we're curious to know who here in the audience has a YouTube channel or is looking to start one. Right on. About 50-50. So, Anyone uh, looking to start one? Yeah, who here is looking to start one? Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I can talk a little bit about the like minimum requirements you would need to start your own channel. Uh, it doesn't take much. You could basically just use your cell phone that you have in your pocket. It has a usually the new ones have a decent camera, records very good audio, and it uploads directly from your phone to the internet. It's not a big deal. It's easy. You can even find editing software for your phone, all the way up to like the higher end stuff where you could buy like a DSLR, spend thousands of dollars. Not required usually, unless you want to like go professional, uh, but it helps. And uh, you know, a decent computer with a decent webcam could do. That's exactly what I use. Uh, mic lighting, desk desk lamps work just fine, depending uh, as long as they're not pointed right at your camera. Um, and a decent editing software program will do. Uh, a lot of computers come with them built in. You can get them on Humble Bundle, according to Musty here. Uh, during the winter time, they sell them pretty cheap. Uh, Sony Vegas is a kind yeah, of Vegas, one. Vegas is what I use, and Humble Bundle the last two December's has done a deal to for like twenty dollars, and it's like an entire like it's an eight hundred dollar set of software, and it's it works wonderfully. Uh, Macs usually come with iMovie, which I've used a little bit. It's pretty good. I use Final Cut Pro now. Not legal. Um, and uh, uh, the one that commonly is used now is Adobe Premiere for the PCs. That seems to be like the standard everywhere, even including in Hollywood. So it doesn't take much. Just start filming things with whatever you have available. Yeah, I think one of the biggest things, you know, a lot of people, we talk about the equipment you need. Uh, the biggest thing that you need to start a YouTube channel is an idea. Uh, and... You'll find, and if you've watched your share of YouTube, like I'm sure that all of us have before we got into it, uh, everyone is doing uh, something. There's a lot of people who do exactly the same thing. And so um, what I would encourage you to do is find something that you are particularly passionate about or savvy about. Um, because generally speaking, people can identify a lack of authenticity. And so if you're just doing content for the sake of fitting into a niche that somebody else does, but you're not in on it, people are gonna see that. And it's probably not gonna come across well on, on video. Um, having that idea that drives you uh, is something that will also help your own motivation to create the content itself. Uh, you will see that at the outset, right, that uh, you wanna be making stuff that you believe in, and that'll make sure that you're, the, you're looking forward to making that next video. You're looking forward to getting in front of the camera and editing because all of that process takes drive. Uh, it's not something that just happens automatically. And I think everyone on the panel here will say that, you know, it takes effort and being passionate about what you do just helps with that motivation. And uh, yeah, speaking of the motivation, uh, we'll speak a bit about what motivated us to make our YouTube channels. Uh, starting with me, I uh, I just started getting the Video Games yeah. Monthly box and I was collecting a ridiculous amount and I was watching a lot of other people's videos and their pickups. And I was like, that looks easy enough and I'm, I'm 
super knowledgeable about games and crap, so I, I should probably try my hand at it. So uh, I just set up my camera without even a tripod, just on a pile of books. And we did our first terribly framed video and slowly improving from there. And uh, yeah, so when we got time, that's what we do. Yeah, mine's very similar to Jason. I start with Video Games Monthly Unboxings because I saw a lot of other people doing the unboxings and my wife encouraged me to do it. And then I started just with my camera and my phone, set it up on a stool with some books, recorded, and then I started collecting more games and I did pickups and it just kind of snowballed. I got to meet more people um, in the community and I just want to talk about games and play games and it was just a really fun place to be so then it motivated me to keep making more content and it's kind of where it went from there. Yeah, same kind of deal. My, I started off looking primarily at just a way to document and share my collection uh, and it's it's comical there are people that are in this room who I know because of my YouTube channel <laughs> right because and because of this convention specifically right like there, yeah. there are videos that I think a number of us have done specifically because of this show uh, and it's it's really opened up uh, and we'll get into talking about making friends so a like that. it's a family <laughs> gathering that's right and for sure yeah, like my YouTube channel started to document my reclaiming my collection that I had to sell off in 2011 to when I lost my job. And it kind of snowballed and turned into something that isn't really about, well, it's still about games, but it's also about movies because that's another one of my passions. And uh, it's kind of turned into like a community type of thing. I, that's what I feel. Well, for me, mine started out with taking random clips and just splicing them together and trying to make some cool and funny stuff. Then we kind of gotten into more of interaction with a lot of the audience, trying to play stuff with them and just trying to bring the whole community together as well. So for me, kind of like a lot of people, we just kind of get inspired. I've been watching YouTube for many years at that point, seeing a lot of guys just talk about games, and I just want to talk about games. Sure, I have friends in real life that also play video games, but they didn't play the same games that I played, and I wanted to talk about the games I was playing. So seeing other people like 8-Bit Eric and Alpha Omega Sin, guys who just set up a camera, just talked vlog style, I was like, I can do that, and that's what I've pretty much been doing since then. Yeah, definitely it's all about building community and meeting more like-minded and similar people to yourself who are just as passionate about games, especially, you know, being from like a small town. Um, I meet nobody who likes games as much as I do. They, like, they might like one game as much as I like gaming, but that's about it. So it's, it was definitely more about like networking and making friends. And the uh, first way to do that was to, you know, to get noticed, you know, join groups and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we'll give you some tips on how to get noticed. First of all, uh, I think the best thing to do is uh, to select the kind of content that uh, best suits you, and go from there. I can talk about this. Can talk about this. Yeah, I mentioned the idea concept, right? And and when a lot of us, maybe not us specifically, but a lot of people look at getting into YouTube, you just want to talk about video games. And video games is a broad, broad topic. If you look at every single one of the rooms on this floor, and you look at the rooms upstairs, like there is such a diverse uh, thing that we lump into video games. So, uh, one of the things that you can really do, and I know Taylor, you, you've got, you were talking about like finding, uh, get a term for niche, like finding a niche audience. Uh, so you got to kind of figure out what that audience is. What do you care about? Do you care about JRPGs. Are you into platformers or shmups? Or it, could you do your YouTube channel about any one genre instead of trying to cater to everything? Um, and so that that can be one way of, of really finding a target audience before trying to get the masses. Because the masses are going to ignore a lot of channels that are just trying to blanket every, everything all at once. But some of that also leads to like uh, another major component of getting noticed is actually how you brand your video, how you put the description, um, and and those sorts of things. So I think you have some suggestions on on uh, Taylor here has some suggestions on uh, kind of refining that to make it something that is more noticeable. 
So one of the first things that most people are going to be looking for is definitely how your thumbnail looks. That is going to be the first thing that they see and they're going to want to click on and that is going to be your best bet on getting people to click. And most people have an attention span, I would say, of about five to eight seconds in the beginning of the video. If it doesn't keep their attention, most people are just going to click on a different video that they see in the recommended bar. So try to make your first five to eight seconds as attention grabbing as you can. If you guys are going to be doing an intro, don't make it super long would be definitely my suggestion to you guys. Try to keep it below five seconds or put a funny clip in beginning and then your intro and then go from there. Um, the description as well, the meta, um, how YouTube kind of does their metadata, they take from your descriptions, your, ta uh, your little tags that you can put in there, and your titles, and they blend it all together. So if you say, this is the most awesome game out there, and there's nothing really to help support that, YouTube is just not going to be very thrilled with it, and it's going to be harder for that video to get traction. Like if you do like Super Mario Bros. World 1, Level 1, and your tags, or your tags also have that as well, and you got that as your title and you got that in your description, it's most likely to get into people's recommended or their search as well. Does anybody else have any kind of things with that as well? Anything that they noticed? I don't know that I did. Um, do you want to talk about some of the do you want to talk about some of the other resources that can help kind of surface like what yeah. the best people are doing out there? Um, I know a lot of people are using TubeBuddy. It is a free program, but they also got other things where you can do like $2 a month, $5 a month, $10 a month. And it's really, it is really useful because you could do keyword research where you could see, like if you put in, like I said before, Mario Bros or whatever, you could see how many other people are doing it, where your video is going to rank all together. So when you type it in, you'll see like, oh, you're fifth and it'll tell you that you're fifth and let you kind of know and it gives you other ideas and other tags that may be useful as well along with the fact that they do also have uh, oh, what am I thinking of <laughs> pretty much uh, they got a thumbnail they rank your thumbnails as well and they compare them to other bigger youtubers and they give you kind of a general idea on how many clicks it could get just from how catchy your thumbnail is. Um, there is Morning Fame. I do not have a lot of experience with it, but it's very close to TubeBuddy, and they do have like milestone achievements and stuff as well. It is a free program, so I would say definitely if you guys are starting, try the free programs out. If you guys like it, then I would say maybe go for go for like the two dollars, and then maybe go up from there. So. Um, another thing you do is just create recurring content. If you just kind of throw random videos up there all the time, it's going to be hard to keep an audience, and you're going to be grabbing people from all over. You're not, you're not going to grow really well. Um, so like me, you know, like the first day of the month, I've got my pickups for the previous month. A couple days later, a week later, I'm going to get my video games monthly box. That's coming out. Uh, and then I stream twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. So my audience knows they're going to get that from me every single month as well as some other random videos that I might, might put together. If I get mail from somebody, I'm going to do a video for them to shout them out and stuff. Um, but, and then also, tentpole content for stuff like related to the time of the year. You know, Halloween's a great time because there's so many good horror-themed games or Halloween-themed games that you can do a lot of stuff with. And, you know, it doesn't even have to be just like a let's play or stream. You know, you can do a top three horror game, something like that. Um, I do, I'm a big Star Wars fan, so uh, last year I did, for May 4th, I did my top three Star Wars games. You know, I'm going to do, again, something Star Wars related this year. Um, you know, uh, Chris here, he's been doing the uh, top three Tuesdays recently, um, and that's really cool. You know, he asked for people to... <laughs> what was that? No, no, no. Um, you know, he even asked, you know, you can make a response video, you know, but you don't have to do that every single week. You know, life gets in the way sometimes, but it's something to, you know, help build that community too. And then it's just, they're fun videos to make. They're easy and it helps get you noticed. And one thing I can't stress enough is you want to create unique work that is unique to you. Um, like when it comes to my channel, I'd like to mix the games with the movies and I don't really see a whole lot of people doing that. I mean, my breadth is pretty small when it comes to like the channels that I can follow and all that kind of stuff, but you know, I know that people seem to enjoy that stuff so far, so I keep doing it, 
Uh, and you want to keep tabs on the type of things that are like trending right now, like a lot of people like to talk about their Switch or the new hot game that's just come out, like Resident Evil 2 Remake or Sekiro or something like that. And you don't want to get lost in the shuffle of all these uh, people that are basically doing the same kind of video. So I like to say mix it up, do different things, try experiment. Uh, it helps immensely to keep you in the limelight and keep uh, make you stand out amongst the crowd. And another thing that really helps is you want to help build community, start doing collaboration videos with other YouTubers. Uh, there's small YouTubers, big YouTubers. I've found it very easy to get pretty much anybody that I've asked to collab because everyone wants to be part of the community and it helps to share everyone's names out there and introduce other people to new channels they might not have seen before. And it's a lot of fun on top of that. So, <laughs> And I've made a lot of friends because of it. <laughs> and many of us are up here as a result of that. Uh, yeah, Aww. definitely. Uh, <laughs> your own unique stamp on stuff is a is a good way to yeah definitely just stand up yeah, in the crowd. Yeah, one thing with collab videos too is a lot of you sometimes things will just fall into your laps as a smaller YouTuber. I don't know how many people here follow the Angry Video Game Nerd, but you might have seen his most recent video, the the uh, Aladdin Deck Enhancer, and because he was working on that, he had the idea of pulling in some other content creators to just have a little cameo in his video, and some of those content creators, uh, one of them in particular, Candy's Game Shrine, she only had, I think she was below 1,000 subscribers when he reached out to her and asked her to be in his video, so you never know if, if, if you're open to something like that, good things can come your way, and when she was featured in that, she, you know, might not keep all the subscribers, but she gained like 600 subscribers just from being in that one video, just for a split second. Just for having her name in that description, and that's pretty cool. Yeah, just awesome by association, for the most part, really. And then uh, there's uh, plenty of other ways to build the community besides, you know, like we discussed, like we mentioned earlier, doing uh, like response videos. That's, that's the thing I like to do. Uh, do like a discussion topic, and then encourage at the end of the video other people to do their own version, uh, a response or something like that. Uh, there's plenty of other ways to build a community as well. I think Taylor's got some stuff to say. One of the best ways to do that is, in my opinion, have like a question of the day, like, what is your favorite Super Nintendo game? Or something in the line of that, and try to have you know a nice civil conversation along with the fact. And your favorite comment, you're gonna want to pin them, because a lot of people are gonna be, oh, you know, I, I wanna be on the very top of the comment section. You know, everyone says first. You know, those aren't going to get pinned. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, milestone celebrations. That is one of the best things you can do. Like, 500 subscribers, you know, do a special Q&A, or you see all those Draw My Lifes, or they, they do something special, like top 10 something. Well, I just, I just did one when I had my five-year anniversary. I had a big live stream event, which was nice. <laughs> and I was going to say, trying to get ideas is very hard. Don't do anything like I did, like doing a 36-hour stream or doing something ridiculous in the line of that, because uh, you will regret it later. Just saying. Um, <laughs> Discord is definitely another good place to be looking. Um, it's got a lot of stuff you could do, like you can have special bots where people can play games, people can earn tokens. If you do streams, you could transfer those tokens from a stream or from a video and you can bring them over to Discord or vice versa so people can keep playing games in the line of that. And you could tell people, like, I'm going live, I posted a video, it's a good place to talk with a lot of other people as well and definitely try to be making more friends. So it's free. I definitely recommend you guys giving it a jolly good romp. <laughs> um, so definitely another one thing too is if you're going to be making videos and other stuff like that you also got to remember what your audience is like if they're going to be like at the age of 10 and stuff you also got to figure out what you're going to be deeming as appropriate and inappropriate i know a lot of parents aren't going to want to hear their or see their kids listening to a lot of bad words or anything on a video you know it, it's kind of a turn off for a lot of parents and well that's very understandable why so yeah let's Pretty much all I got on that end. There you go, buddy. Uh, so, especially when starting out, there is there's a thing that you will see in a lot of places where people will share videos, where people are allowed to just share their videos. You'll see this thing, people saying, sub for sub. Post, I'm going to post the link to my channel, sub to me, I'll sub to you. 
don't do that. Never do that. That's going to go nowhere. But at the same time, you want to get involved with other content creators. Um, you know, follow the big people, follow the people you like, but especially in the kind of content that you're looking at creating, follow other YouTubers that are doing the same thing. Uh, it's a great way to get involved in a community uh, of YouTubers. All of these guys, pretty much that's exactly how I met them. We were doing similar videos, we started watching each other's content, became friends with them. I don't watch their videos just because they watch my videos. I watch, you know, that's might have how it started out in a second. I was like, oh, I'm gonna check out this guy thing. He commented on my video, so I'm gonna check out his channel. And things grown into friendships, and here we are years later, we're all friends. Now it's love. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know, support the community if you want to be supported yourself. You can't expect people to watch your videos, comment on your videos, like your videos, if, if you aren't willing to do the same thing, because, you know, that's basically the whole atmosphere of YouTube. And as a con con content creator, those things are pretty important to everybody. So definitely follow other YouTubers, get involved with smaller creators, and you can find various ways to prop each other up and grow as you go down the road. Another good way to prop up uh, your content is to find find communities out there that actually do elevate uh, content creators and content in general. One uh, best example that I can come up with uh, is on my shirt, uh, the Cartridge Club. We, uh, as a yay, yay, uh, <laughs> we were here last year and we actually did a, did a panel um, and talked about building a community. But one of the big things that that uh, community does is that it wasn't a community built around content, it was a community that was community first and then the content kind of built up from within. And so we uh, we allow individuals to submit community submissions that then get posted to the website, and then um, it's a good way to elevate that and, as a club, um, show some love to people who are really trying and really pushing to to make it and survive uh, in, in, in this kind of kind of an environment. Um, and we do that whether it is uh, we'll get into our next topic, right? Whether whether it is something that's scripted or whether you're doing something live. Josh one, I think. And yeah, so when you're making a video, your first decision, I guess, is what kind of video are you going to do? Are you going to just sit down and throw on the camera and just kind of wing it as you go, or are you going to do scripted content, which in the realm of video games can be anything from reviews to, I mean, basically you could script everything, but you got to be careful with, with scripting. You don't want to be attached to your outline when I first started doing game reviews, which was the big motivating factor for my YouTube channel when I started, and for the first good while, you could tell that I was looking at a script and I was just reading from it. And it, it, it kind of worked, but eventually I learned to better outline things. Don't rely on that script word from word, but scripted content can be Kind of what you want to make of it, I guess. Um, like I said, for, for me, I just did reviews mostly. Uh, Pickup videos, things like that, I just do off the cuff. And I think that's a lot of what Chris does. Yeah, because when I try to script things, I am I reading off a script? I sound like a robot no matter how hard I try. So I decided at one point that I wasn't going to do that anymore and I was just going to just talk to the camera and let the editing fix all my gaffes. So it's worked out really, really well. It's, I think it's more personable when you do it like that, uh, but it also depends on the person who's doing it. Um, if you feel less comfortable just talking to the camera and you actually want all your thoughts laid out in advance, yes, scripting is good. But when, like me, I'm terrible at reading things aloud uh, like this, <laughs> um, I find it's easier for me to just sit in front of a camera and just talk, and if I screw anything up, I just cut it out later. Um, and it's worked out for me pretty well. Yeah, so, you know, that's more like making your videos, but there's also streaming. Um, so I got into streaming about a year ago. Um, at first it was kind of random, I just wanted to dip my toe into it, see what I liked, but then realize what really helps with streaming, if you want to build that audience, is pick days. You know, so people know when you're going to be streaming. So for me, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, or Fridays. 
uh, Tuesdays at 8, Fridays at 9. So my audience knows every week at that point I'm going to be on. Unless, you know, obviously something comes up in real life that prevents that. They know I'm going to be there. Um, but then go along with that, I have themes for my days. So they even know, you know, what I'm going to be streaming. Tuesdays are either I do requests from the audience, but I also sometimes will just do a Captain Algebra Plays where I play a game I want to play. Because you realize if you take requests all the time, sometimes they're going to make you play a really bad game, like Wind Waker. And no one wants to play that a lot, okay? Sorry, yeah. Taylor. <laughs> so then you start a stream where you make Toon Link drown at the beginning, and it's the best thing ever. Uh, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, so sometimes those just, you get burnt out playing those requests. Um, if they're not very fun games, or they're not the type of game you want to play. Like, I'm not a big RPG fan, but if someone wants me to play an RPG, I'm going to try it. Um, so it's tough for me to stick with it. Um, and then Fridays I do what I call the Genesis A to Z. So I'm just going through my Genesis library and alphabetical order and I play it um, at least for an hour. And then if I'm liking it, I'll keep going. If I don't like it, I'll turn it off and play something else. Um, and then once a month, um, my buddy Megadan29 and I, we are the Mega Powers, which is why I kind of look like Macho Man in this picture a little bit. Uh, exactly. <laughs> and uh, so he's like Hulk Hogan, and we have these Mega Power shirts. I mean, it's just something we fun we do once a month. People know about it. We get a really good turnout, um, and we just have a good time. Uh, YouTube, of course, has has its streaming, and I I won't go too into detail on Twitch, although it is obviously uh, the other competing streaming service. And I, I just want to do uh, I'm doing a lot of research on this myself because I was trying to make a decision on where I wanted to do my streaming, and uh, so I wanted to just break break out a few things to consider if you are trying to decide between YouTube and Twitch. Uh, and one of the things that I would uh, just mention is to there is a service out there called Restream, uh, which actually broadcasts you to both sites at the same time. Uh, actually, kind of discourage you from doing that. I feel like it actually kind of dilutes the content, um, and it makes you have to then manage two different chats simultaneously. You could have a conversation going on in one section that doesn't have anything to do with the other one, um, and you should know that. Uh, down the road, if you do go further with Twitch and if you do become affiliate, uh, Twitch actually requires exclusivity for 24 hours at least. Yeah, it's 24 hours. Is it 24 hours? Yeah. Um, so, I heard it used to be longer. I, this is all newer information for me, so it could be. <laughs> it, it very well could be. Um, but yeah, they, they generally frown upon you putting uh, stuff on both sites at the same time. So, if, if that is something you are interested in, just know that that may be something further down the road. We're not going to talk too much more about Twitch, though. Um, if anyone wants to talk about Twitch afterwards, I'll be out in the hallway and we can we can chat about that. Uh, but uh, we should probably get into talking about our next session, right? Like we've hit on a couple different ways to get noticed. Um, there's always a great way to make friends, not necessarily on the YouTube platform, but there are other means to do it. And uh, Taylor, you're going to kind of lead us off with our talk about social networking. So, for those of you guys that don't know, um, social media is the best way to get a reach out to people. Um, a lot of people use Twitter and Instagram, those are definitely the best ones, but you can use Tumblr for whoever uses Tumblr anymore. Um, so raise your hand if you guys got a Twitter or an Instagram, which I was expecting everybody, which is pretty darn close. But definitely tags are going to be your best bet for both of them, like hash, uh, hashtag Wind Waker's awesome. Hashtag <laughs> Twilight Princess sucks. <laughs> Stuff like that to reach the people that you want to reach. And that's definitely going to be one of the most important things you could do. Um, I know with Instagram, though, there was something interesting I found out about a week ago. Um, if you do a lot of hashtags and you do a post every day and you do hashtag gaming on every one, there is a chance you can get shadow banned. So you'd want to switch up your hashtags. Otherwise, people in that hashtag will not be seeing any of your posts. Yeah. So that is definitely one thing that uh, you're going to want to be keeping track of, having a nice pool of hashtags that's going to fit along with your niche for videos, or if you're talking about something like interesting, like you want to talk about pugs, you know, you, you can get away with doing a few of those, but don't, don't have too many hashtags about pugs. Um, definitely another way to be building a community and trying to gain viewers or gain fans is interacting with other people like uh, they were talking about with collabs but you can also 
follow a lot of like other people on social media. Like if I follow Jason, if you guys don't see his, uh, I'm bad with names. <laughs> but if you see his son, uh, his Shante shirt, he likes Shante. So if I start talking with him about Shante on Twitter or on Instagram, and a lot of people are going to be seeing it, and they're going to want to jump in as well, that is a good way to help build your community and a good way to possibly be helping his community as well. So definitely trying to be interactive within the social medias, getting yourself out there. Don't just post your videos or anything like that. That is, sorry. yeah, if you start spamming them, a lot of people are going to come. You know, they may try to do something in the line of like disliking or just ignoring you or blocking you on one of those sites. It's going to be one of the best bets. Facebook groups too. Facebook groups are definitely amazing. Um, my recommendation is don't post any of your content until about the month mark. Be a part of the community, you know, talk with them. Don't just be all about your content. If it comes up, then I would say definitely say, you know, yeah, you know, you, you got a question about Aladdin or something. You know, I made a video about Aladdin. You know, here, if you want to take a look, go ahead. And a lot of people are going to be looking at that and it shows you're not being selfish and you do want to help out the community, which is what a lot of people would like to look for. Right. And especially when it comes to if you want to try to make money on YouTube, YouTubers flat out don't make a lot of money. There's AdSense. If you're a streamer, you can you can get uh, donations and stuff like that. But a lot of people think, you know, oh, I got a thousand views on a video. How much is that going to make me? Well, about eighteen cents. That'll make you about eighteen cents. I was I. I don't think any of us have had a video where it made us 18 cents. Anybody? Anybody make 18 cents off a video? Or anything more than that? You think my channel's monetized? <laughs> Is it monetized? No. No, it's not. No. Well, I guess I'm For just love greedy. the game. Yes. <laughs> I guess I'm just greedy. I want all that AdSense. Right. Well, that's about it for me. Um, we're going to be talking more about Facebook. As far, you, as, far as making the money off YouTube before they upped what you needed to have as a subscriber count and watched hours, oh, that's right. I think I made a total of like eighteen dollars in my videos. But then they like, yeah, they're always switching around. Like, how can they how can they pay you less? Basically, yeah. Um, what, you, what, what, what yeah? What more hoops do you have to jump through to you know to be eligible and stuff like that? So I'm no longer eligible. But yeah, I think they. The caps to pay out is like a hundred bucks before they'll even pay you anything. So yeah, I just right. got eighteen dollars in limbo until I grow my channel on it. <laughs> so I know a lot of people say Facebook is dying. I don't tend to think that at all. Um, I actually enjoy Facebook quite a bit, and it's kind of where I get to chat with a lot of these people on a daily basis. Um, it's a good place to start your community because, like, start a, a Facebook page based on your channel and just start posting all your stuff there. Uh, but then there's also the risk that Tyler told me that sometimes if you start linking your videos directly onto Facebook, you will not get the views reflected on your videos on YouTube at all. So there's like an, a risk there that you might not be getting the views you want. So I would recommend that maybe post your video link directly onto your Facebook page and not do what I do a lot and spam every single group I'm in <laughs> because you're going to get noticed as a spammer and yeah, that's... Kind of something I need to I got 20 rid myself of doing. Christmas have a new video. Yeah, um, <laughs> but sometimes it's also a necessary evil. People just want to get their content seen, so it's also a good way to do that, even though you might get a negative connotation from that. So yeah. So just a little bit more on Instagram. I'm not an Instagram expert by any means, uh, but I've been really trying to apply myself a little bit more to Instagram. It's one of the biggest social media networks there is. And I have noticed some trends. Um, we were talking a little bit about hashtags, but Instagram hashtags are super, super important. There are so many people who just follow a hashtag. Uh, for example, let's just take Shante for example. Uh, if I talk about Shante or do a post, then you want to do things like, you know, Shante, name all the Shante games. Shante Game Boy Color, maybe I'll hashtag Game Boy Color, Nintendo. Everything you could possibly do. Like, uh, a good friend once told me that if I'm not doing 20 hashtags per post, I'm not doing it right. And I do notice certain hashtags tend to bring a lot more attention to, to random posts that I have. Uh, 
I haven't exactly got a rhyme or reason down to why certain posts with Nintendo might get more attention than other certain posts. But yeah, definitely make use of Instagram and definitely go crazy with your hashtags. Use as many as you can, but keep them relevant to the thing that you are talking about. You don't want to just start, like if you're not talking about Nintendo, you shouldn't be doing hashtag Nintendo, hashtag Switch, things like that. So stay relevant um, and use as many as you can. So now I'm going to talk about Twitter and tell you that everything that he said for Twitter does not apply. Um, I am most prominent on, on Twitter as, as my um, social media, as far as with regards to my channel. And, and I find that uh, too many hashtags uh, clutters your message. And I think, I think um, we've already mentioned, you know, don't necessarily use, use Twitter as a billboard. I think a lot of the times people who are there uh, following you on Twitter are there because they generally like you and like what you are talking about. And so if all it is is new video, new video, new video, uh, formerly I liked a video, that went away. Thank you, thank goodness. Um, and uh, if you if you use that platform more for the interactions, you know, and then every once in a while pepper it with, hey, I put out something new, I think that that generally works. Um, but try not to overload your stuff with hashtags, specifically. Uh, engage with trending topics, follow other YouTubers. Uh, yeah, like I said, add a picture, add a GIF. GIF. You guys decide. Uh, <laughs> and what? Fight it out. Fight it out. Graphics it's GIF, right? GIF. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it right. I'll get it wrong next year, too. Uh, but the, the, the big thing, last thing on Twitter, is that just it's not a very searchable platform. Your content gets, what you do on Twitter gets pushed out because people interact with it, because people like it, because people retweet it. It's not because uh, people are searching for Shante, necessarily, on Twitter. Um, other platforms certainly have different different angles there. But, um, yeah, that's about all I've got on, on Twitter itself. Well, we've talked about all the other platforms, and they're basically just stepping stones of how to thrive on YouTube. There's also other ways on YouTube to thrive on YouTube. We'll talk a bit about that. Uh, first thing, you want to make sure you avoid the burnout and take care of yourself, right? I mean, it's fun to have the channel, but you're, you yourself comes first. Um, and so don't try to do too much at first. You know, create a realistic schedule. You know, start out slow and just build it slowly and you'll eventually get to where you want to be. Otherwise, you will get to some burnout, and that can end up being pretty bad for, you know, depending on how bad it gets. Yeah, for sure. So burn, burnout is real, uh, and it is something that hits a lot of people differently, but it's good to uh, be preemptive on this. Don't wait until you're dead to take a day off. Uh, if you need a break, take it. Um, some of the ways that you can do that is to buffer your content, and what I mean is to plan far enough ahead that uh, if you needed to take a day where you're not editing or not filming, uh, that you can do that. And it won't hurt your schedule um, that you're trying to adhere to. But the, the, the important thing is to keep yourself in good health. Um, it comes down to uh, me, myself. Uh, I will tell you a really quick live story here that back in October, I decided to take a little bit of a break. I really didn't say a whole lot about it, and I really, even to this point, haven't serviced all of it, so exclusive. Um, <laughs> I, I was hitting some weird depression type stuff toward the end of last year. Some of it was around my birthday, blah, 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 blah. Um, but I, I had moved last summer, and I think a lot of that was starting to weigh on me because I was trying to push hard to keep going. Um, sought some help. Counseling is a good thing. Uh, and I would encourage any of you to just seek out that kind of stuff if you're ever feeling uh, this community as a whole, YouTube, all of the social platforms, like, we're all friends here. We're all, you know, support groups. Um, you know, and it's something where uh, people will wait for your content. People like to see your content, and people will, will understand if you need to take time away. Uh, but, yeah, that's most audiences. If your audiences isn't going to understand that, then they probably weren't great audience to start. But... Yeah, and then even as a streamer, um, I take days off here and there. You know, when I stream twice a week, plus having my day job, you know, it can get 
pretty um, pretty tough and get burned out quickly. So there's days I'll post on Twitter in the morning I'm like, hey guys, stream is canceled, and the audience is receptive. They understand they're going to be there for your next one. And like like Musty said, if they're not going to be, then you didn't really want them as your audience anyways. Um, another big thing is have a good support structure. Um, there's a group of friends that I talked to. We met on YouTube, um, but we have this app called Boxer. It's like a walkie-talkie app. You basically talk into it, and we talk all day long on Boxer. Um, and it's mostly not about YouTube. You know, we just talk about our lives and what we're doing. Um, bashing Wind Waker is always fun. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, we just, and we're there for each other. You know, I had a bad day. I, I mentioned Mega Dan. I boxed him, and we just chatted about it, and it just helps, you know? So we're, we're basically like family. You know, we, we call each other family now. We're not, we're not just friends. And it's just good to have that there. You know, other creators who understand what you're going through, um, and they're there for you when you need it. And again, same thing with these guys. You know, we talk a lot too. Um, and it's just, it doesn't have to be about YouTube, doesn't have to be about games, it can be about anything that just helps you stay level and down to earth and can help prevent that burnout. I guess I'm, again, never mind, sorry. <laughs> uh, life finds a way too. Um, so, like I mentioned, you know, day job, I'm an eighth grade math teacher. And so, with all the planning that goes into that, um, but I also have a 17-month-old and a 3-month-old daughter at home. And so, basically, you know, I get up at 5.30 in the morning, I teach all day, I take care of my kids at night, and then it's, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and then you, you get, after you put the kids to bed, well, then it's, well, I got to clean, I got to actually eat dinner probably at some point, and then all of a sudden it's midnight, and I got to go to bed, get four hours of sleep, and get up and do it all over again. Um, plus, do my YouTube channel. And so, you know, there's just that balance. Um, so just, you know, for me, it's just a hobby. I get to YouTube when I get a chance. Um, but I know where my priorities lie. And if my daughters need me, that's where I'm going to be instead of focusing on a YouTube channel. You know, if I miss a week, I miss a week. You know, I'll be back when I get a chance. I can have a hefty amount to that. Because uh, as much, most of you probably noticed if you've looked at my channel recently, uh, I haven't posted a video in months because uh, as Ian Malcolm would say, life uh, finds a way and usually it finds a way as a priority above your hobbies. Uh, I had, you know, I've got two jobs constantly working and when I'm not working, I have four kids. So. I had to make a big choice in my life where it was basically like, am I going to be, uh, if I've got my free time, am I going to be just talking about video games or am I going to be playing video games? So if I get a few minutes, it's usually just playing some video games, but lately I've been actually getting a little bit more time, the videos are on their way back, so uh, yeah, you definitely don't put YouTube above the important stuff in life because YouTube is fun, it's great. But it's not all there is, for sure. And uh, anybody else have anything to say about that? Yeah. Um, besides that, I think that's about all we got to talk about. Uh, is there any questions anybody has? Right. Can you guys say what your channel names are? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming. I'm Tim from Captain Algebra. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so again, a little bit do I do. You at the video's monthly unboxings. I've got the monthly pickups. I participate in the top three Tuesdays with Chris. Um, and then about once a month, every two months, we have my buddy Tony right here, back in the day gamer. Shout out. Woo! <laughs> Great Very channel. Check him out. Um, we do the Not So Weekly Retro Challenge where we pick a retro game. We create a challenge for it. The last one was Balloon Fight, who can get the furthest phase. Uh, we did a Super C, no death run, only the P shooter, so no upgrades. And just anyone can participate. It's just fun. Yeah, Ryan likes Super C. Uh, so it's just a good time. Yeah. Uh, so I go by Musty Hobbit. The channel is Second Breakfast, or you can call me Joe if you want. Uh, but uh, I generally talk about my collection. Lately, I've been trying to look at doing reviews of Xbox games. Uh, I put one out there sort of as an, wasn't an April Fool's joke, at least nobody took it as a joke, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's it was the best title ever. <laughs> well, yeah, so, so that series is called Xboxer Briefs, and because uh, they're short, they're short reviews, yeah. And so that's, uh, that's sort of a new thing that I'm looking at. Uh, I have a couple in the pipeline, so maybe check those out. But uh, I'm also recently starting to Twitch stream more, so that's 
a new angle that I'm looking at on top of second breakfast. Uh, my channel is actually my name, Christopher Pico. I left some cards out there. Um, uh, but the show is called The Old Ass Retro Gamer. Um, I talk about video games. I also talk about movies. I'd like to combine them as much as possible when I can. Uh, I do a lot of collaboration videos. I do, uh, lately I've been doing a lot of live pickup videos and live streaming, not games, but just like chatting online and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. Um, my channel's name is Rising Blue Phoenix. We focus a lot on um, Nintendo content lately. It's been a lot of Pokemon and Smash Brothers. Um, we are bringing back videos and streams um, of challenges. Last challenges we did was um, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland without hitting an enemy and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time played with my feet, which is pretty odd, but that's what people wanted. So, <laughs> yeah. Josh? Uh, my channel is The Game Grinder. I do mostly pickup videos, unboxing videos, uh, reviews here and there, and you'll also find the podcast that me and Jason uh, co-host uh, called The Game Fans Podcast. So I think that is it for our panel. Thank everybody for coming. Thank you very much. We'll be out in the hallway if you want to talk to us.